became one of the most influential and useful men that ever lived in America. Children, it's been a pleasure being your teacher this school year, and I hope to see you all again in the fall. Class is dismissed. Well, it seems like a good thing, but wait till I tell you. We were just out of school for the summer, Bill Driscoll and myself, and having a joint capital of about $7, we needed some money. Of course, any kind of hard work was out of the question. So when this kidnapping idea struck us, it looked pretty good. We selected the little daughter of a citizen named Ebenezer Dorset. Bill and me figured that Dorset would melt down for a ransom of $20 to the cent. But wait till I tell you. You ready for this? Sure. Let's do it. There she is. Ruby Joy Dorset, only and no doubt treasured daughter, Ebenezer Dorset Esquire. Yes, Bill? Get an easy $20 for her. was as easy as falling off a log. Only falling off a log might not have bruised Bill's leg so much. Who knew a little girl could kick so hard? After a while, though, she calmed down and was content whispering dire threats about scalpings, massacres, and worse into Bill's ear. She had him pretty shook up by the time we got to the river. Everything went fine on the raft, though. Ruby had finally settled down and was silent for the time being. Bill was pulling, and I was supervising. When suddenly I realized we had left our supplies behind. I was pretty tired from the big day, but being the considerate fellow I am, I volunteered to go back and get him while Bill took the girl to the safety and comfort of our little hideaway on Callaway Island. Bill, you take the kid to the hideout. I gotta go get her supplies. We left him on the mainland. But you're gonna leave me here alone with this little terror? Sam, what if she runs? I don't know how to deal with little kids. Bill, she can't run. We're on an island. Just humor and set up camp. I'll be back before you know it. All right, Ruby. We're going to go to the hideout now. Come with me. I'm not Ruby. I'm the mighty Indian warrior, Red Chief. Okay, Red Chief. Let's go make camp. Shh! Quiet! You don't want to alert the pale faces of our position. So that's how I left them. Ruby, or should I say Red Chief, was heart and soul a mighty Indian warrior. And she had Bill, whom she christened Old Hank, wrapped around her little finger. By the time I got back with the supplies, she had stalked and captured poor Hank and had sentenced him to be scalped the next morning. Paleface, do you dare to enter the camp of Red Chief, the Terror of the Plains? She's all right now. We're Plain Indian. I'm Old Hank, the Trapper, Red Chief's captive, and on to be scalped at daybreak. Man, that kick can kick hard. You can be Snake Eye, the Paleface Spy. We can bully you at the stake at sunrise. Whatever you say, Chief. Let's get some supper. Boy, I am hungry. I like this bun. I never get a before, but I had a pet possum once and it was nine last birthday. I hate to go to school. Rats ate up 16 of Jimmy Talbot's hands and fed them hen's eggs. Does the trees move and make the wind blow? Why are these round? We had five puppies. What makes you know so, Red Hank? Have you got beds to sleep on in this cave? Amos Murray's got six toes. A parrot can talk, a monkey can fish. How many does it take to make clothes? Uh, say, Red Chief, would you like to go home? Aw, oh, what for? I don't have any fun at home. I hate to go to school. I'd like to camp out. You won't take me home again, Snake Eye, will you? Uh, not right away. We'll stay here on the island a while. All right, that'll be fine. I never had such fun in all my life. That Red Chief was a feisty one, all right. 
We all went to bed early and the chief slept soundly. I'd figured that after a good night's sleep, she'd be more docile. But boy was I wrong, because early the next morning... Ah! Sam! 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 What? Sam! What? What are you thinking? Now go back to bed and don't get up again till I tell you. Oh, thank you, Sam. You saved my life. You don't think she actually would have gone through with it, do you? Nah, she's just excited about it being a new place and all. Don't worry about it. It'll pass. What you getting up so soon for, Sam? Uh, I, I got kind of pain in my shoulder. I thought sitting up would rest it. You're a liar. You're afraid. You was we burned at sunrise, and you was afraid she'd do it. And she would, too, if she could find a match. You know, awful, Sam. Think anybody will pay out money to get a little imp like that back home? Sure. A rowdy kid like that's just the kind that parents don't want. Now, seeing as it looks like we're not going to get any more sleep, you and the chief make breakfast. I gotta head to the mainland to reconnoitre. Poor Bill. I felt bad leaving him like that, but after a while, I put it in perspective. All he had to do was keep an eye on one little girl for half an hour. That was nothing Bill shouldn't be able to handle, even if she did think she was an Indian chief. <laughs> Come to think of it, it was me who had the real scary job, risking life and limb to go back to the Dorset homestead. Yes, sir. Compared to me, Bill had it easy. There he is. Old Dorset himself. I'm looking none too worried, neither. Then again, maybe it hasn't been discovered yet that the wolves have taken the lamb from the fold. Haven't helped the wolves. I must admit, Dorset's unruffled appearance sure threw a wrench in our plans. So, I decided to take a walk and think things over. Bill and Red Chief were surely fine making breakfast and relaxing in our snug little hideaway. So, I figured they wouldn't begrudge me a little peace and quiet for my thinking. And by the time I got back, we could discuss my newly formed strategy over a good breakfast of fire-roasted potatoes. Okay, you little rogue. Time for some breakfast. And you're going to help me. No, I'm not. put a red hot potato on my back and smashed it with her foot. So I boxed your ears. Have you got a rope about you, Sam? I don't think a rope will be necessary, Bill. Ruby, why don't you go explore the island a while? You'd like that, wouldn't you? Well, all right, but I'll fix you. No one ever yet laid hands on the Reggie if it didn't pay. You should be all right now, Bill. You think she'll run away, Sam? No fear of it. She don't seem to be too much of a homebody. We've got to get some sort of plan for the stuff about the ransom. There don't seem to be too much excitement on account of her disappearing and all, but then again, they may not have realized yet that she's gone. They may think that she's just spending the night with Aunt Jane or one of the neighbors or something. Anyhow, she'll be missed today. Look, tonight we got to get a letter to her father demanding the $20. How about this? Ebenezer Dorsa Esquire. We have your daughter concealed in a place far from town. It is useless for you or the most skillful detectives to attempt to find her. The only terms on which you can have her return to you are these. We demand $20 for- $20? Sam, don't you think $20 might be a little high? I mean, if you want the amount to be somewhat reasonable, so I'll actually be willing to pay it. I don't want to get stuck with this little heathen around. Alright, $15 in bills for her return. If you agree to these terms, Send your answer in writing by a solitary messenger to the old oak tree on Owl Road tonight at half past eight o'clock. If you pay the money as demanded, she will be returned to you safe and well within three hours. These terms are final. 
And if you do not accede to them, no further communication will be attempted. Oh! Behave, I'll send you straight home. Now, are you going to be good or not? Well, I was only funny. I didn't mean to hurt old Hank. I'll behave, Snake Guy, if you won't send me home and if you let me play the Black Scout today. That's for you and old Hank to decide. He's your playmate for the day. I'm going away for the day on business. Now, you get back there and say you're sorry for hurting old Hank, or home you go. Wait, Sam, what about you? You're not leaving, are you? Please don't leave again. Besides, what if someone found us here? We'd have no escape with you taking the raft and all. Well, of course I gotta leave again. How else would old Dorsey get the ransom note? And besides, I want to see how the town's reacting to the kidnapping. Still, it is a nice day. I'll leave you the raft and swim to the mainland. You know, Sam, I've stood by you without batting an eye through thick and thin. I stood by you in fist fights, caves, getting lost, and all sorts of adventures. I've never yet lost my nerve till we kidnapped that... Two-legged skyrocket of a kid. She's got me going. You won't leave me long with her, will you, Sam? Oh, Snake Guy, you said you could play with Black Scout while he was gone. We'll play it, of course. Bill will play with you. What kind of game is it? I'm the Black Scout, and I have to ride to the stockade to warn the settlers that the Indians are coming. I'm trying to play an Indian myself. I want to be the Black Scout. All right, sounds pretty harmless to me. Guess Bill will help you foil the pesky savages. You are the horse. Get down on your hands and knees. How can I ride at the stockade without a horse? Better keep her interested until you get the scheme going. Loose it up. Hurry back, Sam, as soon as you can. I wish we hadn't made the ransom more than $10. Oh. Sam, I suppose you think I'm a renegade. But I couldn't help it. The girl's gone. I pushed the raft off myself. I tried to be faithful, but there came a limit. Well, what's the trouble, Bill? I was rode 90 miles to the stockade, not barring an inch. And then when the settlers was rescued, I was given oats. Sandy ain't a palatable substitute. And then for an hour, I had to try to explain to her why there's nothing in holes, how a road can run both ways, and what makes the grass green. I tell you, Sam, a human can only stand so much. So I takes her by the neck of her clothes, drags her to the raft. She gets my legs black and blue from the knees down. But she's gone. She's gone home. I pushed the raft off myself. I'm sorry we lose the ransom, but it was either that or Phil Driscoll to the madhouse. Will you play junk with me now, Bill? I'll be the lion and you can be the zebra. Sam? Well, Bill, I know you've had a rough time of it and all, but I can't play with her just now. I gotta get some rest and something to eat. It's been a long day and it's gonna be even longer tonight. I gotta be hidden in the ransom tree, but by at least an hour before they arrive to watch out for constables and the like. But, but Sam, I've had a long day too. I'll probably have an even longer night than you will with this little hellion around. Bill, I'm so very tired. Just think, what have you been playing horsey in the sunshine all day? I've been swimming upstream, walking miles, asking questions, and talking to strangers, trying not to be recognized. Then if that wasn't enough, I also delivered the ransom note in constant fear that I might be found out right to the doorstep of our captive's father, and swam all the way back here in the freezing cold water, fighting the current the entire way. And now, tonight, I have to go back and sit shivering in the cold, barely daring to breathe, much less move, sitting in a tree. I didn't know for you, Bill, and this is the thing to oh, give me- Oh, Sam, do stop. I didn't mean it that way. I just- No, no, Bill. Let poor old tired Sam do the babysitting, too. Really, I wouldn't ask that of you. I'm sure it's hard work playing horsey all day. No, really. Go rest. I'll take care of the red sheep. Lion! Lion. Come on, Lion. Let's play. The rest of that night was pretty uneventful. Except that during supper, the lion thought that Bill's leg looked better than her bread and apples and decided to sample it. But she was pretty tired, so we put her to bed. And I left for the ransom tree. There was a knot digging into my back the whole time, and I'm not big on heights. But when I saw that envelope on the ground, all my troubles vanished. I figured replacing the red chief with $15 would lift Bill's spirits considerably too. So I waited to open it up till I got back into camp. Well, the great unveilings arrived. After this, we'll be rich. Sam, that doesn't look like $15. Let's see what it says. Two desperate men. Gentlemen, 
I received your letter today in regard to the ransom you asked for the return of my daughter. I think you are a little high in your demands, and I hereby make you a counter proposition, which I am inclined to believe you will accept. You bring Ruby home and pay me five dollars in cash, and I agree to take her off your hands. You had better come at night, for the neighbors believe she is lost, and I couldn't be responsible for what they would do to anybody they saw bringing her back. Here respectfully, Ebenezer Dorset Esquire. Why, well, I've all Sam, the Indian... Sam, what's five dollars after all? We've got the money. One more night with this kid of a handle. Decide me to a bed in Bedlam. Besides being a thorough gentleman, I think Mr. Dorset is a spendthrift for giving us such a liberal offer. Tell you the truth, Bill. Little you is getting on my nerves, too. We'll take her home now and make her get away. One problem. How will we get her to go back home? She won't like it. You leave that to me. I'll take care of it. Hey! Hey, Ruby! Wake up! Your father just wrote us and said he has a silver-mounted rifle and a pair of moccasins for you at home. You'll probably need them for when we go bear hunting tomorrow. Really? Oh boy, can we go right now, please, Sam? I think we can manage that. One, two, three, four, five. There you are, sir. Five dollars and you get back, just like you said. What? You're gonna leave? We're gonna go bear hunting and camping out in Oakville? Don't just leave. You can't. How long can you hold her? I'm not as strong as I used to be, but I think I can give you ten minutes. <laughs> oh, good. Ten minutes? I should cross the central, southern, and midwestern states? We feel like you get from the Canadian border. I don't doubt it. I'm free. I'm free. Now I'm finally free. That little girl terrorized me. She's gone. I'm so glad that she's gone We've learned our lesson now Does the trees move and make the wind blow? Tell me why our oranges run Why our homes must be demon I wanna know Free.